It was a beautiful day. I decided to go to City Island, uh -huh. and I put my iPhone on my phone, sorry about that, on, on a tripod and took a great picture of the clouds developing over Sarasota. And let's take a look at that. Now, this is a time lapse that I took earlier today. Look at those clouds. They didn't make it up very high. Uh, it just wasn't the dynamics to make that happen. You can see they kind of build up to maybe two, three, three and a half thousand feet, and then they collapsed and come back down. And that was the pattern across most of uh, the Sun Coast today. The interior parts of Florida did have some thunderstorms, but at this hour, you can see most of them are gone. You can see a few lingering ones right in the heart of the state. And overnight, we could see a couple of pop off just offshore and um, may see some lightning if you're looking out west over the Gulf of Mexico tonight, but they should not make it on shore. Now, there were some storms also in South Florida, all over to Miami Dade and Fort Lauderdale. Well, they are gone. And there are also some storms south of Orlando. They have also dissipated. So it's going to be a dry, quiet night. It'll be a dry, quiet tomorrow for the most part. It's going to be pretty similar. Now, on our tropical weather outlook, things are heating up as we've been talking about for days. Here's tropical storm Fiona, which is not going to be a tropical storm by noon tomorrow, I don't think. Just be a low dissipating over the North Atlantic. We have another area with an 80% chance of developing off Africa, but this is the one we've been looking at for the last uh, several days. And this is the plot of all the different computer models. And it doesn't show you the intensity. It just gives you a rough idea of where the models thought they would be. And each model has its own purpose. Now, here's the rub. Uh, a few days ago, it was going to go into the Gulf of Mexico. Then it was going to the Caribbean. Then it didn't form at all in the models. And then it was going to skirt South Florida. It was going to go to the, the, the Carolinas. And now it looks like it's going to shift a little to the north uh, uh, on the current path. So what I'm trying to say is that it's a great deal of uncertainty. We're over a week away from any potential threat to the southeast, but Bob Harrigan and I will be looking at it very closely over the next week and keep you posted on any changes. Now, there's a little chill in the air for late August, a little chill, but the temperature is down in the 60s across eastern Canada and all the way down through the Tennessee and Ohio Valley states tonight. It's the result of a weak cool front that's been pushed south by a little dip in the jet stream, and that front right now over the Carolinas, and believe it or not, it'll actually make it to Jacksonville in about two days. It's not going to get all that cooler, but they might just feel a hint of somewhat drier, cooler weather by a Wednesday when that front <coughs> does pass Jacksonville. Now, for us, this high pressure over the Gulf of Mexico is channeling a northwest wind over the Sunshine State. Now, that is just blocking that east coast sea breeze from developing, and it's keeping us fairly dry, which we saw today. That pattern will continue tomorrow before... Well, let's take a look at the forecast. And believe it or not, this time of year, you don't expect a cool front to make it to Florida. But look, as the high pressure backs off and goes to the mouth of the Mississippi Valley, that low off the eastern states dips down over the Florida panhandle. And here comes the front stalling out just south of Jacksonville. If you're very observant, you saw the increased amount of showers and thunder showers developing as that front sag further south, the moisture increases. So we're going to be back to that same old pattern by the time we get here on uh, Tuesday and Wednesday, especially Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. We'll be definitely back to that moisture afternoon thunderstorm pattern. For tomorrow on the water, northwest winds 10 knots, seas 2 feet or less, only a light chop on bay and inland waters. Heading to the beach, it's going to be beautiful, 90 degrees, but the UV index, of course, 11 for this time of year. That's very high. Make sure you use your sunscreen. The water temperature at New Pass, 87. Thanks to Moat Marine for that observation. Now here's my forecast for tonight. Partly cloudy and warm with very slowly temperatures cooling off from the uh, low and mid 80s to 76 overnight. Our average low 74 and our winds will be from the north to northwest 5 to 10. That's why we don't have that sea breeze coming in from the east. For tomorrow, partly sunny with only about a 10% chance of showers. Higher amounts as we move east of Interstate 75. High temperature 93 with those north-northeast winds 5 to 10 miles an hour. And Bobeth, here's a seven-day outlook showing that we will increase the chance of rain to 40, 40, 50, 40, right on for the rest of the week. But tomorrow will be a dry day, a beautiful day, high temperature 93.